like to call now Chris uh, Bartridge. Uh, he's the managing director for Mercator, Marine, and Cargo City. Uh, good afternoon, penultimate speaker. Please stay awake. Uh, Trevor Maritime Centre, thank you for inviting us. So I'll work this. Okay, who are we? We are Mercator Marine and Cargo Solutions. We are an independent surveying company. I do a lot of ship inspections. And we were set up in 2020 at the height of the pandemic. In 2020, the pandemic meant that nobody could travel and people were being forced to find new ways to survey ships. As governments closed their borders and instituted travel bans, there was a need for ships to keep working, for inspections to carry on, for cargo to move, and thus we were forced to find new ways of keeping the industry working. For us as a startup, the pandemic was a blessing. Uh, owners who couldn't easily travel were looking for reliable local contacts to attend vessels on their behalf, and we started doing S&P and dry docking inspections for European owners for vessels based here in the UAE. By providing live feed videos, we were able to provide the owners with visuals of their vessels in real time, and this supported our detailed independent assessment of asset condition and the maintenance work that we required. Post-pandemic, some remote inspections have continued, and the development of remote monitoring and verification services has accelerated. In particular, the use of drones for inspections and general vessel support has increased significantly. Multi-level impacts of the implementation of AI and digitalization on vessels have the potential to completely change the contemporary framework of shipping operations and associated activities. To cope with the challenges associated with digitalization, various entities, including international organizations, flag states, and shipping organizations, have already responded by developing strategies. Among the stakeholders in the supply chain, shipping companies, as we heard earlier, are involved in hiring seafarers, operating ships, and transporting goods. So their plans for digitalization will potentially influence the future of shipping to a greater extent. Work at sea is also expected to change. The research predicts that roles, organizational structure, and responsibilities will change from operating at sea to monitoring, managing, and supervising systems from ashore. To cope with such changes in the nature of work, it is critical for crew members to reskill and upskill. They may have to obtain new competencies such as remote control, cyber security, programming, data processing, and even certain commercial skills to assist work on board along with their traditional seafaring skills. It is probable that leadership and organized work on board will dramatically change due to digitalization, and this will push the role of crew towards that of monitoring navigational systems or engines. In this case, leadership can be explained as a capacity to consult with a manager or an expert ashore by proactively proposing the best alternative solution for the shipping company. Thus, digitalization has the possibility to make the boundary between a ship and shore opaque. As I've said, during remote surveys and inspections, depending on the technologies being utilized, both the onshore management team and the onboard personnel can live stream directly with the surveyor. These virtual abilities enable owners and operators to make fast, accurate decisions about their asset. Rather than bringing in a number of personnel on site, one at a time, a single onboard inspector can easily contact multiple remote experts for input. In addition to being more convenient, remote inspections ought to be a safer and more cost efficient option for asset owners. Surveyors are no longer required to be on site in potentially unsafe environments, and asset owners can eliminate travel and lodging costs. That said, from my perspective, nothing beats being on site, absorbing the noises, smells, vibrations, and nuances that are lost in a remote inspection. So based on all the positives and the cost-saving potentials, the inference could be drawn that the owners and operators would prefer remote inspections. But is this correct? A 2022 survey found that the increased use of digital tools on board vessels is generally perceived as a positive development i.e. increased personal survey, safety, enhanced efficiency, but attention needed to be given to a number of elements, including an over-reliance and better training. 
to ensure the industry reaps all the benefits of these tools. Positively, digital tools are seen by seafarers as having a positive impact on efficiency at work by reducing administrative burden and time spent on tasks. And the majority of seafarers felt that digital tools would improve their personal safety and a wide majority felt that they were qualified to operate them. There is, however, a difference about those working on cruise ships and tankers who were generally optimistic and positive and those sailing on ferries and short sea trades who were less enthusiastic. So what was perceived as the biggest benefit of increased digitalization? The seafarers said that the use of digital tools on board referred to time saved in carry out tasks and the simplification of those tasks. Other benefits include improved accuracy, less risk of human error, reduced workload, less paperwork, help in decision making. They also highlighted that enhanced remote medical assistance made possible by digital tools would be a benefit. For the stakeholders, for them it was a reduction in the exposure to risk, i.e. physical exposure to properties or cargoes, but also allowing the daily tasks to be less physical physicality for the seafarers. They highlighted efficiency gains, better optimization of resources, and reduction of errors. All of them saw digital analytical tools as seeing the opportunity to be more proactive in improving safety. There were negative effects. The seafarers responded about a lack of human interaction and face-to-face -face contact. This meant that their well-being was diminished and it could have a negative effect on their mental well-being. Another negative issue was the stress and anxiety by malfunctioning digital tools. The time spent troubleshooting and double-checking is seen as undermining some of the positive effects. They also said that the reliance on digital tools was leading to a reduced situational awareness and increased complacency, particularly with regard to the younger generation of seafarers spending much more time looking at screens, in, at screens instead of looking out of windows doing traditional watch keeping duties. They also questioned the over reliance of owners on digital tools. And there was an increased digitalization risk that meant there was less crew on board and their jobs were likely under, effect, uh, under threat. They were asked about the perceived effects of increased use of remote inspections. And it was interesting that both seafarers and stakeholders came up with common themes. Many of the respondents perceived the increased use of remote inspections as having a negative effect on crews. It creates more workload for crews, with many of them having to scan documents to send via email to an inspector before he arrives. They make the point that this has led to increased fatigue on board. It's also led to isolation and psychological issues. A general consensus in both replies emerged reacting to the increased use of remote inspections. And whilst those inspections are deemed useful and can be used on an occasional basis, the majority of stakeholders agreed that they should not fully replace physical inspections. So what are the takeaways from this? The takeaways are that owners and those involved in this must involve the seafarers in tool selection and design. They must focus on the user friendliness and comprehensive testing before implementation. They should ensure provision of ongoing training that blends digital and traditional skills so neither are lost and those are enhanced. They should adjust training for the varying familiarity levels with digital tools. They must consider the integration of built-in training modules within those digital tools. And they should address risks like cybersecurity and manual overrides. It is a big thing that we should consider the burden of responsibility when digital tools result in a shift to tasks from ship to shore. Responsibility should follow the task and crew fare, seafarers should be valued for what they can do. Thank you.